So this just came in the mail today. It's a Dennis Wick trumpet mouthpiece. The model is the 4E. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Well, the first thing you notice is the box is a little mushed. It's not, um, not the strongest thing that I guess I've ever seen. Like if you compare it to the Yamahas that we've gotten, here's a Yamaha box on the other hand. It's smaller, but as we've seen in the past, they actually pack their mouthpieces in this beautiful cardboard carry. So it definitely protects the mouthpiece that you have um, from Yamaha. Let's see what the Dennis Wicks looks like. So, what's protecting it inside? Well, it looks like a big chunk of paper, which seems to be their mouthpiece guide. That's awfully nice to have on hand. And let's see, and that's it. Um, no other protection, so this poor thing just kind of rattles around in the box, and if the box gets damaged, then this might get damaged. Um, I know it's a small thing, how the product is packaged, the uh, little cardboard box, but I think it goes to say something about the manufacturer and how important or how valuable they think their products are. Ah, uh, but that could just be me. All right, so I think this will be a little easier to undo than the Young home ones that were securely wrapped in plastic that took a sharp object to open up. Ooh, shiny. All right, so this is the Dennis Wick. Let's see, where is it? Dennis Wick 4E. So the Dennis Wick 4E is um, another lead trumpet mouthpiece. I mean, as you look at it right away, uh, it's got a pretty shallow cup um, and a nice, very very, actually very flat rim. So the Dennis Wick Company, it's, um, they're from England. Um, Dennis was a trombone player and he retired so his son is taking over and uh, running his company now. So they make mouthpieces like this, um, mutes, they make uh, quite a few different types of mutes um, and different kinds of accessories. So this 4E has a cup diameter, um, this dimension here, of 16.5 millimeters. Um, and it has what they call their shallowest cup. And if you look at it, yeah, it's pretty darn shallow. Um, they talk about something called their backbore having a V-type. So if we were to look at the V-type backbore, um, okay, <laughs> it's a backbore. Uh, maybe we have to take a look at it and compare it to uh, another mouthpiece. So that difference that we're trying to look at is that this has what Dennis Wick calls a V-type backbore. Um, well, it definitely looks like it opens very quickly. Um, uh, yeah, in fact, if you look like way down, you know, down in here, it opens up very quickly. Very, um, you can almost see how it's kind of, you know, like a funnel or V cup um, versus more of a tubular kind of an opening where this one just kind of more gently opens up. So I think it opens up faster in the uh, uh, on the Dennis Wick. So I think that's what they're trying to tell us with their um, this whole V cup backbore. And they describe it that it's supposed to have you know a much more focused sound. Um, it's supposed to have a little bit of projection Again, as a lead trumpet mouthpiece, that's kind of what you're looking for, is to be able to uh, make sure you're heard over the, uh, the orchestra or the jazz or the room that you're, you're playing in. And this 4E is also supposed to have their shallowest cup. So again, let's take a quick peek at the, the Dennis. Oh, look, I've got a little thing in that thing. Oops, sorry, okay. Um, back to the cups. Um, wow, yeah, definitely looks, it's definitely shallow. Um, the other thing that's noticeable about the Bobby Shoe and the, um, 
the Dennis Wick mouthpiece, is look how square, look how flat that rim shape is. Um, and if you look on the inner rim shape there, you notice how much more rounded the uh, Bobby shoe is as compared to this Dennis Wick. And let's see, how about um, the thickness? Well, if you look at that, well, you can really see that scratch, that little ding I've got on there. Oops, sorry about that. Nice mouthpiece, I already got a ding. Anyway, the flatness, you can really see how it extends and, and is, is probably gives a very nice cushion um, where you see the outer rim shape of the Yamaha's uh, is much more rounded. Um, and that's for comfort as well. But, you know, this also would be comfortable, help with endurance a little bit. Um, because it distributes the um, pressure of the mouthpiece uh, across a, a larger part of your embouchure. And if you look at the throat size, uh, the, the Bobby Shoe Lead has a 3.56 millimeter, and this definitely looks bigger. And you can definitely see this is visibly bigger, so more in the maybe the Bobby Shoe Jazz, which is 3.65 millimeters um, there at its widest. Um, and if you also notice, the entry um, to the throat, you see how the Dennis Wick is more open there. It's much more of a, uh, a more flared opening where it's got a much sharper entry point um, in the Bobby Shoe lead. All right, let's take a look at how that um, throat size compares. So this is the Bobby Shoe Jazz, which had a, a throat size of 3.65. And let's see how that compares with this Dennis Wick 4E. So, I'm, wow, that actually is much bigger. So this might be closer to 3.7, I'm saying. Thinking? What do you think? Let's see if we can do a contrast. No, let's, let's put it on the white box. That's better. Now, one thing I haven't said about this Dennis Wick is that its its numbering condi or conventions are are very different, right? What is 4E like? How does that translate when things we've been looking at are like, let's say you have a 7C, so the 7 um, doesn't indicate the millimeters or the actual width, but roughly the size. Um, so uh, for Dennis Wick, they go from, their first letter goes from one to five, where one is their widest. So that's kind of like a, a Bach name convention and uh, that Yamaha also, uh, and Choki also prescribe to. Um, so it's about 17 at the widest. Um, and then five for Dennis Wick would be their smallest cup. Um, which goes all the way down to 16, so a half a millimeter smaller than, than this one. The other thing that Dennis Wick does is their cups. At least that's, well, kind of similar. Um, the B is their medium cup, C is a shallow cup, and that's very different um, if you're looking at a Dennis Wick mouthpiece versus, say, um, a Bach or a Shoki or a Yamaha or you know any others. They're going to have... You know, C is like a medium cup, um, A is shallow, and in the Dennis Wick line, uh, B is deeper, A is the deepest, I don't think I even saw an A on their chart, and E, which this is, a 4E, is their very shallow cup. So it's the opposite of most other trumpet mouthpieces that you see out there, where A is the shallowest, um, here E is the shallowest. So back to the comparison, we know um, some of our other videos have a Shoki 14A4A that's from like 45 years ago. And here's a sneak peek, oops, sorry. <laughs> here's a sneak peek at a brand new one. So we're gonna take a look at this, uh, compare it to the different mouthpieces we have, uh, including that old one. Uh, to see what changes have occurred in the last 45 years. Uh, so that should be interesting. 
Uh, I can't imagine a lot of changes, but we'll see, won't we? And if you think this these videos are of, of value, or if there's something that you'd like me to talk about differently, please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you could like it, then you're you're going to find that the uh, algorithms that Google, because Google owns YouTube, um, will start putting more trumpet uh, focused content into your recommended feed. So um, you'll do me a favor by liking um, this, but you'll also be doing yourself a favor because you'll get more of this kind of content. And hopefully um, you'll have more information in terms of choosing trumpet mouthpieces um, the more content you get. And as always, you know, your face and um, your muscular development in your embouchure, um, how you play, what you play, your experience level, all of those things are very, very different. So what um, your friend might like in this mouthpiece, you may not like, or you may just absolutely love this mouthpiece and your friend can't play a note out of it. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, these uh, are really just, we're just trying to provide some perspective for you and give you as much information as we can about these things. Um, I don't play them or toot on them. Well, I do play them. I do try them after I wash them, of course. Um, I don't think that's really of value to you because what I can do or not do, you can probably do way better. And like I said, you're your face, I'm sure everything is very different than mine. So it's going to make a big difference in terms of would this mouthpiece be good for you or will this not be good for you? Anyway, um, hope this helps and thanks for playing along. <laughs>